So I have been very, very resistant to the idea of using the fish shell for a very long time, and for what I think are pretty good reasons. When I originally heard of the fish shell, if you used it, there were many things that just didn't work because it's not POSIX compliant, which means that all of the bash scripts that you have probably aren't going to work out of the box. Now, in most people who heard my argument against the fish shell would always tell me that the fish shell was meant to be your primary shell and that transitioning to it would be a one-time thing and then it would be fine, right? But I was never really interested in abandoning Bash because Bash is primarily functional on every system that you could possibly think of. It could even run on Windows, right? So I really have never seen the benefits of Fish, especially because ZSH has all the functionality that Fish has, just maybe not out of the box. You have to do a little bit of work and that's has always been fine with me. You know, I've used all my ZSH, I use power to level 10,000, all the stuff you would need to make ZSH like fish. And, you know, it's been fine. It, wor it works really, really well. But recently, or at least in the last few releases, the fish shell, which stands for the friendly interactive shell, has done quite a bit to make themselves better. So today, what we're going to do is talk about the fish shell. Now, before we jump into anything, what I want to say is what this video is not. This video is not a tutorial. This video is not a fully featured overview of all the features that Fish has, right? I could not possibly go through the entire Fish language. I couldn't go through all the features that Fish has and keep this video under, you know, 20, 30, 40 minutes. So we're just going to cover the things that I enjoy and the things that I don't enjoy about Fish and a few reasons why I may or may not be switching to it. So let's go ahead and jump into the Fish shell. So here we are, and I have Fish set up on this machine here, and I've been using it now for, oh, maybe two days or so. I think it's been about two days, and I have some thoughts. So when I was first taking notes for this, I went through and I watched the videos that my fellow YouTube creators have made, and most of those are between three and four years old. So they are quite old and they all mention the same thing. So if I go to my notes here, you can see the things like I, I have some of the positives that it has, right? These are the features that I'll be covering here in a little bit. So, so the rest of the stuff here is basically negative. Like the syntax is different. It's not POSIX compliant. Writing functions is prettier, but the syntax is different. It also ends if statements with, you know, end it has line wrapping, but it doesn't use FI like bash does. You know, it doesn't recognize dollar sign for variables. It also has its own way of setting the path variables. So, you know, all this stuff here from here down in my notes was all negative. So this was all before I even installed Fish. All I was doing here was taking notes from fellow YouTubers' videos. You know, I watched uh, Luke's video. I watched some of DT's stuff on Fish because he's a really big guy on, on Fish. I watched a Linux Dabbler's video on Fish. So I watched quite a few. I did some research for this time, so you should be proud of me. But then I used it. Like, I installed it, and I have to say that none of that stuff is true anymore. It seems like in the most recent releases, they've done a good job of taking care of basically everything that I had written down there in terms of negatives for fish. So, like, the dollar sign now works. So if I do echo PWD, which is, a, you know, a variable that you can do if you wanted to, it works just fine. When I tried fish a couple of years ago, just, you know, on the off chances of making a video about it, that would give you an error. Like, it just would not pass through fish without completely borking everything. So, the fact that that works is a sign of good progress, right? So, let's jump away from my negative first, first impressions and talk about the things that are really, really good that I really, really enjoy. So, the first one is going to be the auto-completion. So, if I do something like this, you can see that it does a really good job of having auto completions and syntax highlighting and that stuff is built in. Now, I'm used to having this stuff because I have built it into ZSH, so this isn't that impressive for me, but it's done really, really well and you don't have to have any extraneous plugins to actually get here, so that's really nice. I think that I enjoy the colors more because they're differentiated on fish. Whereas on ZSH, they're not always differentiated. Sometimes they show up, sometimes they don't show up, and it's kind of hit or miss. Now, usually it's pretty good, but you still have places where miss. On Fish, everything's color-coded. Even if you were to write a function or something like that, it would color-code. So if you were to do something like if downloads, you know, 
And, and, and it, what's really cool here is like if you've made a mistake, so like I've made a mistake in this function, and if you, you don't know what it is, you have to put a, a space in between here in order for that to be, you know, equals, you know, whatever. You can just finish that function, but as you can see the, the syntax highlighting is there. And if you made a mistake, it would actually color code itself red so, it tell, that, so that you know you had a mistake. That's actually really, really cool. So auto completion and syntax highlighting are two of the big features that I really enjoy with my ZSH prompt and that they're built in fish is really nice. Another thing that is spectacular in fish is going to be the inclusion of the option selector. So if I do ls dash like this and then tab, it's going to show me all the options that I could possibly have. And that's cool, CSH can do that too. But what's really neat here is that it actually gives you the explanation for all of the options here. So, you know, all, almost all, whatever. And then over there in parentheses, over here, it shows you what those things are actually, you know, going to do if you use them. And on top of all that, if you want to, you can tab through all of them just with the tab key. And then, you know, you select it and it would actually allow you to select that one and use it. That is spectacular. It is so good. And while I do think that you could build this into ZSH, I'm pretty sure you probably can, uh, because ZSH also has tab to complete as well within directory so I don't think it'd be that hard to implement a plugin or something like that to get ZSH to do this well it's built into fish you don't have to worry about it that's cool another thing that I'm really going to enjoy that I haven't set up too much yet because I just haven't got into it is abbreviations so the way I understand abbreviations is that they're kind of like aliases only instead of being an alias it is a, an expansion. So if you've ever used like a text expander before, like on Mac or something like that, or maybe you've used one of the text expanders on Linux, you can have it so that if you type in like, a, I don't know, like GP or something like that, it would then expand to whatever that's supposed to be. So like Git pull or whatever, it could be an expansion. And it would just expand. Whereas with aliases, that just stays GP. So if I open up another terminal here, which is still in ZSH, if I type in V, V I have alias to end them. But if I hit space and then just, you know, do something like this, you know, it works just fine. But if I go back up in history, it just says v test.txt. It doesn't actually tell you what that alias is. Now, you can set it up again to do that if you want to. But with fish, I also have v here. And if I hit space after hitting v, it actually expands to nvim. Now, obviously, you have to set that up. But... It allows you to, then if I wanted to do something like this, I go into the fish config, which is, this is how you set up an abbreviation right here, ABBR, space, the thing that you want to type, and then the thing that you want to expand to. And what's great about this is that if I go back up in history, it actually shows me the actual command, not the alias. So if you are someone who has a ton of aliases and you can't kind of keep them separate, but you sometimes want to go back in history and know what commands you're doing, this is a good way to, of knowing what those are without being confused by the aliases. Now, most people have their aliases down, so that's not that huge of a deal. But I will say that abbreviation functionality is really good and really cool. I'm not so sure that it is an improvement over aliases so much that it would make me switch to fish alone. But the fact that it exists is really, really nice. Now you can add abbreviations and stuff right from within the current session. So you could do ABBR dash dash add and then something like uh, GP and then git pull, you know, like that. If you wanted to do that and then you'd had that. And if you did GP and then expanded it out, it would replace it with git pull. But when you closed fish, so if I exited here and got out of fish and then went back to fish, GP would not actually work again because it's gone. So it was just for that one session. So if you wanted to add an abbreviation just for the session, you can do that. It's similar to how you could do that with alias. So if you go into, if we exit out of this again and do alias uh, GP equals git pull, like so, uh, and then G, did GP again, you know, it would, you know, say that, obviously I'm not in a git repository, so pulling is, is stupid, but the idea, the alias is there is, active until this session goes away. So you can, the abbreviations works very similar to aliases, just with the addition of being able to expand within the history. So that's really cool. So let's go ahead and move on then to some of the things that I found that I don't really care for. Now, first of all, uh, I will say, before actually before I do that, let us let me show you that the fish shell actually does a fairly good job of 
running scripts that are bash. So I have a bash script here called time.sh. All it does is display the time along with some icons. So if I do dot slash time.sh like so, it'll actually show me the time just like you'd expect. Now if I vim into time.sh, you can actually see that there are variable, this, this is actually a shell script, not even a bash shell script. So this is as POSIX compliant as you possibly could get. Uh, well, I mean, in theory, right? I mean, I'm, I'm not a professional bash scripter or scripter at all. So I'm sure there are some errors here, but you know, in theory, the idea here is that it uses all POSIX compliant script, right? And technically fish doesn't support that stuff, or at least it didn't, right? But it does now. So there's a dollar sign here. There's a dollar sign down here. A lot of this stuff in previous instances of fish would not actually work and it works just fine. Now, the other thing that I want to talk about is the path thing. So if you are a normal person who uses bash, you probably have a couple lines that look like this here. Uh, it's possible it's all in one line. Maybe it's not in an if statement, whatever. It's something similar where it basically is defining the paths that you have on your system. Now the path, if you don't know, is a system on Linux that allows you to have basically all of your executables and binaries in certain places. So these are defining the directories where all of your executables are located. Now most Linux systems have at least two paths, or at least have two directories that are in the path variable. So in this particular bash rc i have dot bin and i have dot local dot bin there's usually also some more global path variables that aren't defined in variable in the bash dot rc so usually user local bin is also by default in the path and that's the way bash works it's the way zsh works it's the way shell works that's just the way that it works right it defines the path as a variable path equals whatever and then that directory would be in path with fish as you can see up here on the screen that's not the way that it actually does it. It does it in an if end statement. And obviously this is kind of similar, but it also uses the status thing, right? And uses set because the default way fish sets variables is not path equals whatever. It's set and then some options and then the variable name and then, you know, the path or whatever. So it's different. It's not the same. And as far as I can tell, the two are not interchangeable. I have not tried to interchange them because I don't want to mess with the path. Because uh, if you mess with the path, things could possibly go wrong. If you, you no longer have all of your binaries executable by the system, you know, things break. So I haven't messed around with that. And I so I don't know if, and this is straight from the fish documentation. So it should still be true, but I have noticed some things that aren't up to date on it. So it's possible that this has changed. I will, I will just say that I'm weary of changing the way the path is defined on my system. It's probably the biggest hurdle I have right now to actually switching to fish because I don't actually want to mess around with that all that much because I just want my path stuff to work. And it's not, I'm not saying that it wouldn't work. I'm just saying that I'm weary of it, if that makes sense. Another one of the things that I was a little bit weary about before I actually got into this because I did that research, as I said at the beginning, was that from the guys who use this shell all the time, it apparently at one point wasn't possible to set it as your default shell, or maybe it was unwise to, and it may still be unwise to, I'm not sure. But from what I can tell from the documentation, there doesn't seem to be a problem with actually doing it. So at one point you had to copy it from one place to another in order to get it to be a part of the slash etched shells uh, directory or whatever. That no longer seems to be the case, even though it still says it in the documentation. It's right inside of user uh, slash bin or whatever, and it just sets just as you would normally set ZSH or, or or bash or whatever. So it works just fine setting as your default shell. So if I do NeoFetch here, you can sell, I, see I'm actually using fish 3.6.1, and this is my default shell. I've logged out, logged back in, and set it as my default shell, and it works perfectly fine so far. So if I, I haven't done a lot of testing with it as my default shell, just I'll be completely honest with you, but it works as far as I can tell, just like any other shell would. It does obviously still have those, have those limitations that I talked about earlier. Uh, if you were going to switch back and forth between different shells, that's probably not a good idea, at least as far as I'm aware, especially if you're going to start running or writing shells in fish, going back would probably be a bit of a hassle. So if I were to switch to fish, and I think I probably will, at least on this machine, I would probably continue to write any bash script or any scripts that I have in bash or shell or whatever, and then just 
allow fish to interpret them, which it seems to be able to do fairly well. Now, the final thing that I will talk about here is that I've only used this for a couple days, and I've only used it with scripts that already exist. So all the scripts that I've tried with it so far work perfectly fine, no matter the fact that they're written you know, as a shell script or a bash script. They seem to work just fine. I have not run all of my scripts. So if you see my scripts folder here, I have, you know, dozens of scripts. So I haven't had a chance yet to run all of them, but the ones that I have have run fine. So as you're listening to or watching this video, just know that I haven't tested this for more than a couple days. So there, it's still possible that, you know, I don't understand everything that's going on here. I, As I said at the beginning, I definitely don't know all the fish ins and outs in terms of the syntax and stuff inside of a script because... I don't even know if I'll learn it because I'm not going to be doing any fish scripting at all. If I were to use this full time as my shell, the reasons why I would use it are because of the abbreviations, which I really do like, because of the syntax highlight highlighting, which is built in and a little bit better than the stuff that you can get on ZSH, and because of the tab to complete stuff that works better than the ZSH stuff does. So those are the three reasons why I would use fish if I were going to use it, and I think that I'm going to give it a try. I'm not guaranteeing that I'm going to stick with it for any amount of time because ZSH is my baby. I've spent a lot of time customizing my prompt and all that stuff. And I didn't even go into the prompt customization in this video because Fish has a whole bunch of that stuff set up for you. I think there's even like a web interface that you can choose between different prompts and stuff like that if I rem remember right. I don't even know if that still exists. I haven't looked into it. Um, I've just been kind of focusing on making sure that it actually works before I get into the customization of it. If you're interested in seeing a video on customizing fish, leave a like and a comment below, hashtag YouTuber, and uh, we'll see if we can make that happen. So that's it for this video. If you have thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'm not sure what's going on with the camera here. I'm pretty sure that I pointed it up somehow when I was moving around my desk and installing my new graphics card. So I'll fix that afterwards. Anyways, uh, sorry about that. That's it for this video. If you have comments, again, uh, comments in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you if you have thoughts on fish or whatever. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon uh, and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Thank you for your support so very, very much. It's just absolutely you guys continue to blow my mind, so thank you so much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.